Hey everybody, Rich again, just doing another update on my kitchen remodel. Um, I received the doors from the uh, door company that uh, made them for me, the manufacturer, um, and I went through the pallet last night. I didn't uh, film that because it was pretty tedious work, but basically going through my whole order list of about 30 seven to 38 doors and drawer fronts and measuring everything out and making sure that it was accurate and trying to figure out which ones were what and what matched with the line items that was in the order sheet. Um, so it took a long, long time, but um, I was able to account for everything um, and pretty much everything looks good. I did have some issues with a few of the doors. Um, some of the doors I had to have some special boring um, instructions uh, because the the boring uh, locations for standard doors is usually um, three and a half inches from the bottom and the top of the door is where they locate it um, and I had to have some special adjustments because of uh, the drawer slides so if I actually had um, the bore at three and a half inches, I was going to have, it was going to run into the, the actual drawer itself. So I had the manufacturer raise the boring height to four and three quarters up. So it's more kind of in, in between um, the two uh, drawers so that it's out of the way. And then also had them raise the height from three and a half to I think two and a quarter um, so that it's away from the the drawer itself when it slides out because you don't want it because the mounting part of it will actually stick out a little bit and it, it'll hit the drawer so you have to account for that when you're when you're um, uh, purchasing the the doors that you have if you plan on using uh, slides if it was just a, a shelf you don't have to worry about it it's just straight you know three and a half down three and a half up uh, and that's where you put your um, you bore the holes for for your for your cabinets, and that's provided that you use the European style um, uh, hinges. So the issue that I had is that this is the door for this side, and this is the door for the other side. Um, and as you can see, the boring is up to four and three quarters, and it's up at two and a two and a quarter but the problem is is they're both right hinged doors so this one will work but this one will not um, and the reason being is that if I flip it around and mount it it's gonna open this way rather than open in inwards which is you know uh, in actuality it should open uh, to the center of the cabinet and not out this way. It should always open to there. Um, and it's going to be problematic because this one's going to open to the center and then this one's going to open outwards. It's going to be weird looking. So uh, obviously uh, nothing wrong with the door itself other than the boring. Um, most of the doors, they came out really nice. Um, very accurate measurements um, and good quality construction. So all the ones that I had, all the ones that I had uh, special um, boring instructions, for whatever reason, they got them wrong. Um, this is opposite of where it should be. Um, the boring should be on this side, so when you flip it around, it, the bore is here so you can open the door this way. Um, and this one, the boring should be on this side, so when you flip it around, the hinge should be right here and it should open in. But they, they did them backwards. Um, and I specified to the sales team that, uh, you know, I said, I, I said right hinge and left hinge, and I based it on, um, I based it on looking at the cabinet with the doors closed, not being inside the cabinet, kind of similar to when you're in an automobile, if you say the right door, well, in a car, that means it's the passenger door because you're sitting in the driver's seat and that's the right door. So you always are from the perspective of the driver's seat. But in a cabinet, you're never going to be inside a cabinet. So you're looking at the cabinet's front. And when I say right hinge, 
right hinge means here. So that means on the back side of the door, you actually have to do uh, that side. So they agreed with me that that's what it should mean, um, but they wanted photos. So I sent them some photos of what the issue was uh, and hopefully they can get it addressed. So that's the, that's the, uh, the update with the doors. Um, I did work on um, get, setting up myself a paint booth and, and coming up with a little Lazy Susan to be able to paint uh, the doors. Um, and I'll show you um, my little paint booth that I kind of created in the garage. So the garage is a pretty big mess right now because I got stuff everywhere. Um, and I don't have any place to do it in, in the house. Uh, because the kitchen's basically done. That's where I was painting all the cabinets. So I got to do the doors in the garage. And it's starting to get cold because it's about the middle of October now. And um, uh, there's only a few warm days left. So I, I needed to be able to exhaust the fumes out. I mean, the fumes aren't really terrible, but I just want to get the overspray out of the booth. So I kind of came up with a makeshift uh, paint booth. I covered the, the garage door in plastic and then I um, made some plastic walls and I can kind of show you from the inside. Made a little door. I had all this leftover uh, cardboard from, from when the uh, cabinet uh, drawers and uh, doors came. So they had all these uh, uh, wrapped in, in cardboard and I, I figured I better keep it because I could put it down on the floor so I don't get any overspray on the floor. So I did that and uh, see like I taped the ceiling but now it's starting to come off but hopefully everything else will hold. I kind of reinforced it because it was um, starting to pull away. As soon as I turned this fan on it started sucking everything in and uh, you know I, I haven't uh, an entrance for air and then an exhaust but apparently this is just drawing too much and uh, it's not it's not being able to keep up so it's wanting to suck the room in tighter um, I had to basically leave this loose which kind of defeats the purpose of not having clean air in here but um, the only way that it would not pull itself uh, crush itself in is to leave this open a little bit um, I'll probably tighten it up a little bit when I get ready to paint, but uh, in any case, I created this little um, rotisserie to put the doors on and be able to spin spin them. Just use some leftover uh, plywood, and I had an old cloak hanging rod, and I uh, used it, bought a little Lazy Susan at the store, and um, just kind of connected it up. It's not real super sturdy, but for what I need, and, and I'll be gentle with it when I'm moving it to paint it but it'll allow me to spin the door around without me having to go around and and actually worry about the hose um, from the spray gun so this is my makeshift one um, I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, getting suited up and, and mix some paint and maybe do a couple of doors um, prime a couple of doors right now um, just to try to get started um, as quick as I can okay